what's up yo's and yoettes it's gonna be a scorcher out here the next couple days which is why i've been building this gazebo um i thought i'd do this video separately than uh, the rest of the build videos because those of you that have been following along on this journey for the last year and a half i've been living out here um have seen plenty of chainsaw milling i think and it's always a fine line between putting it in so people, new people to the channel will get to see how I make all the lumber out here and then not annoying the hell out of those of you that have been watching all the videos. So this one, if you're sick of seeing chainsaw milling and moving logs around and stuff like that, skip right over it, go to the next one. Um, it's just gonna be like two days where it's too really too hot to work on the, the gazebo. So I'm gonna drag some logs, get a pile up here of every single log I can find that I could possibly mill. I'm gonna put in a pile, which I haven't cut any trees down in probably Gosh, it's been, other than the bow legs for the gazebo, I bet it's been six months since I cut anything. So this is all just down stuff that either fell down in windstorms or I cut down previously. Get a pile, mill it up just for these two days. And I got a couple other things to do. I don't know if I'll put them in the video or not. My, uh, the little roof I made for my generator, my little bitty generator, it doesn't, it's not really waterproof because I sealed the roof like I did all of the deer castle, <laughs> you know, use those cutoffs that I mill, like the end of the log, the first and last cut of the mill, snapped a line on those pieces, uh, ripped it off with the chainsaw, ran the hand planer over it, put them all together, and then the cracks I just filled in with like roofing tar, basically, which is totally not the right thing to use, but it's what I had on hand out here, and it's super cheap. So as the lumber dried out, you know, the the cracks got bigger, pulled that stuff apart. So anyway, it's leaking. I might work on that. A couple other little things around here today and tomorrow. And maybe I've got two Ryobi fans. So I can open this thing all the way up when it's really hot. Strip down to just some shorts, flip flops, put the fans on me and try not to sweat to death. But if I'm out here, there's just no way to cool down if I'm actually out working, standing in the sun and everything. So I don't know. let's see what happens, see how it goes. And I gotta get, also gotta get rid of some of these fur poles that are laying here. It's what, 20 feet from my tent and I listen to these grubs. Grub? Larva. I don't really know my insects too well. I guess it's a uh, beetle larva that get under the bark of the, uh, especially the furs. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I hear them all night long crunching away in here. I'm gonna drag these over to the fire pit, cut them up and then burn them next time I have a fire. Look at all that stuff. Oh, got a little toad there too. <laughs> but it's all coming out of these, out of these furs they get into. So I'm going to drag all of them out of here and burn them up. Hey buddy, what's the matter? You don't like GoPro? You prefer Sony? All right. How does anybody get by even one day without a four-wheeler with a winch? I don't really have a plan for these anyway, but they were just nice and straight, so I hold on to them. And if I did have something to do with them, I could easily have peeled them and they would have lasted a lot longer. Just the bugs out. This is exactly how it happens. I think, man, it's gonna be hot. What could I do today that wouldn't make me sweat? Well, I could just drag logs around with the four-wheeler. And then the first thing I do is grab logs and I think, well, those have to be cut up. Get out the chainsaw. Well, if you're gonna chainsaw, you don't wanna lose your legs. Some people actually like their femoral artery and their kneecaps. It's only about 80 right now, only. In my mind, living out here doing this kind of stuff, 80 is like 100. I'll cut them up fast and get this stuff off. The reason of 80 or 70 or 60, everything feels so hot to me is because I live out here in a tent all winter long. So I just think maybe I'm just used to the cold, but perhaps it's also because everything I do during the day from the time I get up to the time I go to bed involves wearing full grain leather boots, jeans, chaps, which are basically snow pants, usually a long sleeve shirt, helmet, everything. And the other possibility is I'm just a big whiner. It's a real possibility. 
Okay, get it off. Get it off. Oh. Already hot, already hot. Not good. Whew. Okay. Well, this got out of hand pretty fast, as things always do out here. Started out just gouging out the flaky spots with my knife and went to the chainsaw grinder. <laughs> and I guess these weren't good clothes anyway. What you gonna do, stop? Stop and change clothes? <laughs> Not a chance. So stupid. It got a little too hot. I was sweating my butt off, so I had to use an excuse to run out to the lake and fill my buckets and enjoy the AC in my car for a few minutes. Now I'm back to filling these cracks back in. Some of you probably don't know that when I came out here a year and a half ago, I didn't come out here to stay indefinitely, well, indefinitely, but no idea what that meant, if it was going to be a month or a year or whatever, so a lot of this stuff I threw together, well, like the lean-to, is clearly two tarps, you know, that was something I needed immediately, Tito and I needed immediately, so we put it together as something to make do for a short period of time, and even this thing, I just, like, this is all cut off scraps, it was in the burn pile that I used instead of, uh, milling up actual lumber to build this thing and it's clearly i put it there just to uh cover up the little generator and some a few other things underneath there but this is just junk just something i needed right then to uh serve a certain purpose so even like caulking this thing in is using the cheapest stuff you can find because you know it was it only had to last a couple months but now i'm going on halfway through the second year out here so maybe stuff I start to build, I'll spend a little bit more time. Not a lot. I mean, I'm not going to spend money on any of this stuff because what for? If I spend money, then I got to go get a job and make that money back. So I'm still going to do it cheaply, but I'll take a little bit longer view of some of this stuff. Just a little bit. Not a lot. Don't worry. Got the uh, dollop in my ears. Don't know if you guys have heard that one. Pretty funny history with hilarious commentary. And bugs are getting bad. Gotta turn on my bug smoker. These things really do work. You might think it's a scam or it's crazy or how much does it really work if these work great i put the link in the description of this video i think it's in like all the videos now at the end it's a link to where you can get these things but turn it on wait five seconds or so push the button and there's a little tiny flame inside that just heats the pad up and i'll set this down here and within five or ten minutes there'll be no more bugs right around here it's a lifesaver put it on nice and thick 350 a tube, why not, right? Oh yeah, the thing's called a thermocell, by the way. My brother told me about that when I moved out here and I thought, eh. I don't think I'll get one of those, and he gave me one to use, and I use it every single day, spring, summer, fall. Not so much in the winter, although 
after a while I did kind of get addicted to the smell of it. <laughs> I think it smells like no bugs, which is great. Hopefully it keeps the rain out, we'll see. All right, listen, I don't have to justify myself to you guys. I'm going for it, I think. I've been back and forth so many times. But here's my thought. There's so many aspen logs everywhere. They're already down. Saves so much time. The stuff warps and cracks like crazy, especially when you make thin boards. But I think I'm gonna do one inch boards for the roof and they're all gonna be nailed down. So they're not gonna have time to canoe up, you know? So clearly they'll shrink, they'll move around, but it's the it's the ceiling. And even if they do split in the middle of the board, they're all gonna be nailed down anyway. All right, like I said, I'm not justifying this to you people. I don't, I don't need your okay. I don't need, I don't care. You think it's a good idea? I'm gonna do it. Generally these big guys come down because near the bottom uh, from the stump all the way up, it's rotten in the center. So I can see 15, 20 feet up the woods fine. So I start down here at the bottom and just take chunks out until I get to good wood and then see what kind of uh, lumber making log I can get out of there. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Huh. Nope. Maybe the whole log's bad. Only the, the very tippy end down there that I was looking at. Probably the only good stuff there. That's not too bad there. Uh, yeah. Here's the break, just in that 18 inches. All junky. Oh, that's, that's a little bit, oh yeah, the center's still soft there. Well, I don't even know if I'm gonna get a full log out of this then. Make one more cut, and if it doesn't stop the rot bite, probably just a bark. You can't find a spot in the log without rot and one more foot, then gonna have to not use this one. Bummer. Log's got kind of a weird shape to it, but probably still get a few good boards out of that. Won't bother uh, dragging that one out onto the trail here until I'm ready to mill it. Move over here and do the same thing with these three. Hopefully, get a couple good logs out of it, but you can see how this uh, is probably pretty gross in the middle, busted up. And that's why it came down. But clearly it's not going to be good for ways here. You can see a crack that goes all the way up to here. So I'll just, it's just the bark. Yeah, it's just the bark. 
So let's make a cut there and I usually will cut it and just take like a dinner plate out of there. Slide it out so you can look at it. And if it's good, then we'll measure down probably 10, 11 feet or so and cut it off and use it for milling. I'm only gonna get maybe one good log out of this one because by the time I get down here, it's a little bit too funkily. I think that's the word, yeah, that's the word. That's uh, the crack that was in the top of the log is just this. That whole thing's pretty good. Might cut off another foot or two. Eh. You know, I think I'll leave it because I could get two short logs out of this whole thing otherwise. Ooh, 13 feet. That's not really much good for anything. Some weird inclusions up here too. Well, I guess we'll just take a foot off the other end because that's where that crack is. See what we can find on this bottom one first. Get it out of the way. See that stump sit back up? That can happen with blowdowns too. Like look at that. You get a tree that blows all the way over and then you cut it, take some of the weight off of it and they can stand right back up. Look how much of that came up, about 45 degrees. That, that thing's been down a while too. I'm surprised it looks not very rotten. I have to cut a couple feet off it and try it again. Pretty solid couple of weird spots. Maybe one more round and then... Eh. At least if I leave it like this, I can probably get two logs out of it. So I think I'm going to cut like a 10 footer out of there. If I go too long, then my winch on my four-wheeler won't be able to drag it out of here. Yeah, let's do 10 feet. <laughs> Yeah, I better get this other one out of the way first. So I cut this 10 foot section out of here, but this one's gonna get in the way, so I drag that one out of the way, pull it out here. In order to do that, I gotta drag this one out of the way. And then this is the fourth one, the first one that I cut here. I guess I'm gonna do a nice open spot back here, so I'm just gonna drag, gosh, I'm gonna have to move that a couple times, drag it out there and then go that way. Make a little pile of them there and mill it all right there in that flat spot rather than sitting on sticks and rocks and bumps and those other uncomfortable things. Very questionable whether or not I can pull this one out of here. It looks like it weighs about 50% more than the other, maybe twice as much. Kind of a matter, a matter of uh, traction and steering. So I always try to make sure I got this perfectly in line with where I'm going. 
ideally because once you've got all that weight on the front you can turn the wheels and nothing happens so I don't know we'll see if it works Drag this guy out of here and see if I can get one more out of there and drag it out, and then we'll have what five to work on. Uh -oh. That's what happens when the log is a little bit too heavy and you've got no steering. The only reason I'm cutting them all one after another and dragging them over is I use this saw for uh, milling. I got a small saw that would just take quite a while to cut through all these big logs to get them down and out of there. So I got my full chisel chain on here just for cutting all this stuff up. Once I get it all down, I'll switch the chain over and put the mill on and then I won't have to go back and forth a bunch of times. So one more. Gotta remember, I still got 15 feet of really good log right there. At least a dozen feet. Probably end up using it. Yeah, the bark on this stuff's like 
alligator or something. So tough. log. Curious to see how this is going to come out. Twisty and knotty and whatever, but maybe as a roof it'll be fine. Left my uh, drill out twice now in just this minute. Notice it's starting to, uh, by left it out, I mean I left it out in the rain. So the water was just like draining out the next day. That was like three weeks ago. Still works fine, but noticing some weird noises. <laughs> One thing that's concerning right off the bat is this. See how much that's come up. There's a lot of weird forces in that tree. Huh. Well, hopefully I can get this milled up real fast and get it on there, nailed down before it gets any more twisty. Hmm. That is some crap wood. <laughs> Wowzers. All it's got to do is hold up tar paper and shingles though, so that's all right. For how bad the bark is, it's remarkably bug free. A couple little bug spots, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. This weird stuff, can't tell what even what it is. There was an old crack there. Looks like maybe that is a crack in like an old inclusion or something. Oh well, let's keep going. That's after one pass. Let's see how much sawdust is there. After about one log, this gets, this gets comfy almost. You get about two, three, four inches of sawdust. That's something nice to kneel on. For now, I only have these on to something soft to kneel on and for something to sweat into. Make one inch boards. Looks nice enough, I guess.
that'll be good. Not all of it, maybe two-thirds of it or so is usable, it looks like. Someone's just gonna have too many cracks, like already has cracks in it. Let's see, this stuff is already cracked all the way down. There's a crack there. There you go. That stuff will only get worse, but you know, if it was cracked only down the middle, I might just go ahead and use it anyway and put a couple nails on either side. It's gonna be all locked in by the next board and whatnot, but this one would probably be junk. All right, next log. Well, I was gonna stack all this somewhere, but I might as well back it right on the trailer and take it down there. Ooh, man, it's such a weird smell to it. I guess it's from that uh, being slightly starting towards dead and a little bit of spalting or something in it. I don't know. Got a real funky smell. <laughs> That was a decent sized log, not very long, but kind of hoping the others are a little better inside than this one, although there's not really much reason to hope that. What do we get? Six out of that. And a lot of junk. Well, it's better than cutting the rest of these cedars down and then having to do something with all the branches and I don't know, it's a lot of work. This is surprisingly less work to do it this way, even if a third of that's not good. That's it. I decided yesterday I gotta make myself start or sort of stop working a little bit earlier for the next few days. Getting super worn out, probably not eating enough. Get up and get going in these long days in the summer and do like probably average about 11 hours a day doing this kind of stuff and it's too much. You know, I don't quit working until like, I, I mean working, you can interchange working, playing, screwing around in the forest, whatever you want, but living out here like this, it's so much fun that it's very difficult to actually actually take the time and you know read a book or just relax a little bit and when i go till 7 30 at night then gotta put all the tools away put everything totally away in case it rains there's always a chance of rain you know you don't want your chainsaws and four-wheeler and stuff sitting out find something to eat heat up shower water have a shower it doesn't give me any time i mean i haven't had had time to look at the comments your guys comments on the videos for like two or three weeks now 
just because I've been doing this for too many hours of the day. You know, I had a couple people out here for a little bit. It takes some time, and whenever I have a big project like this going, it's all I want to do. Just like seven days a week, 12 hours a day. I just want to work on whatever it is because it's a freaking blast. It's so much fun to build this stuff. But I'm stopping early. Well, early is... Yeah, early 6 o'clock. So I still won't get anything done tonight, but at least I'll be in bed at a more reasonable hour. Get a little extra sleep, maybe take in a little, some of that extra time and eat some extra food. Cram down a little extra peanut butter, you know. Do the important stuff. Anyway, uh, next video probably be right back to the uh, gazebo. This is, I got maybe one day left to mill up these other three or four logs. So drag them all out there and uh, start putting the roof on it. That's going to be so much fun too <laughs> to actually have a shaded place to hang out and I have to order some screen to screen the entire thing in I don't know I don't know what's going in there but it's gonna be nice to have a place to sit work on videos when it's hot you know these days that are over 90 degrees you can't you can't do anything productive when it's 95 you guys hear the the thrush Kind of quiet now it's like somebody's flying through the treetops playing flute <laughs> anyway catch you on the next one